So let me set the scene. You've just come back from site after installing your Microtech gateway. You climb on your computer, you play your favorite tunes, open up Winbox and you inevitably find your device and try and connect. And lo and behold, you cannot access your device. And this is the most frustrating thing that I think you can encounter and you just wish you could get a ferry to actually go to site and simply pull the cord and plug it back in because that would just resolve all the issues magically. And so we've all been there, whether it's a small Microtech, a big Microtech, everybody's installed a Microtech and wished that they could actually reset the device in the field after for some reason it disconnected and you just cannot get it back again. Well, today we look at a very simple way as to how to reset that device with a little script and you never have to worry about this again. So let's get started. So first things first, we log into uh, our new Microtech and we're not gonna go over the setup of the entire Microtech today. If you wanna see how to set up one of the Microtech knots or if actually applicable to uh, LTAPs or any of these Microtechs, I'll put a link in the video below. Today, we're just gonna concentrate on how to reboot one of these devices remotely if there's a problem. Right, so the only thing I've done is just set up my wireless profile. Um, I had to do that because we need internet for this. If you go to systems, on the systems there's a tab called scripts and obviously this is a new router so there's nothing there. So we're just going to go ahead and add a script, I'm going to call it the ping script. And a script is just a sequence of commands that you give the device that runs those commands when you, when you call on this script. So I call it the ping script and you'll see now why. So I've just gone ahead and already written out the script, but we can go through it at the moment one by one. So using the router OS context or syntax, um, it's very easy to see uh, that it's a if statement. And basically what the script does is it pings this IP address 10 times every time we call the script. And that's as easy as it is. So if you don't know this by now, Google is actually uh, the IP or the public IP address of 8888. Um, you can change this to whatever you like. For us, it's just a, a reliable source. I think when Google goes down, we've got bigger problems. So this is an easy way for me to check whether the device itself has got internet. So all the script goes through is it literally pings Google 10 times every time I call the script. And if any of these counts comes up to zero, we do the following and you can see that by the do command over here. Simply in the do command, we hit system reboot and we'll reboot the entire router. Now, there is a million and one ways to do this. So please do not think this is the only way or the most correct way or the most wrong way. This is just bare basics to make sure that this device, if it loses connection for whatever reason in the field, it reboots itself to try and recover itself from, from that state. Now, very important to note, for some reason, when you close this bracket of the if statement and you have your cursor hovering over there, you need a space. I'm not entirely sure why, but if that space is not there, the script does not run. So you can see there we've got a name, a ping script, you can call this whatever you want. Now I'm just going to copy that because we're going to need that now. Make sure we have the space, we say apply and OK. And you can see your script there and you'll see you've got a run count over here, which is currently is zero. So next what you want to do is head over to system and there's another tab called scheduler. So we're going to go ahead and create a schedule as to when to run our script. So we're going to say thing check over here. Uh, the date doesn't really matter. It's don't set it to the future, basically what I mean. So you can always set it in the past or today's date and it'll run. So this just says, since then, when must it start? And since it starts at 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. midnight, this is what it says right now when the next start time is. But what we'll do is, is we'll set this to startup. So whenever the router actually reboots, it'll start up on that front. Then over here is how often you actually want to run that script. So. We want to run that script um, for the purposes in the field. I generally run it every five or 10 minutes, but for the purposes of the video, we'll just do it for one minute now so you can see the effects. So we do that 
And then down here in the block, you can see that we just paste the name of the script we would like to run. And obviously this list can be endless. You can have an infinite amount of scripts running on the Mikrotik and you can all chuck them into one scheduler or create different schedules for different type of tasks, depending on the higher priority of how often you like these things to report. So we go ahead, we do that. This is perfectly fine as is. So we go apply, okay. And so it starts. So from this minute onwards, one minute later, what you'll see is this count will run once and this count will run once. And effectively, every time it calls the script and this script actually runs, it's gonna ping Google. And if it can't reach Google in 10 tries, it will reboot the entire system. And there you go. So to recap, if you open up your schedule spring and you open up your, your script yourself as well, these are the two important notes. So behind the script itself, you need that space. And in the thing script itself, there's no space because you're referencing the name over here. So whatever you name it has to be exactly same title, same font, same well, font lowercase, uppercase, spaces, all uh, sensitive. So make sure that is accurate over there. And what you'll see is once I reboot this device, the run count here should generally match this count over here. And that is it. So this is by far the most simplest script to implement to reboot your device remotely. You can make it as smart or as dumb as you want. Um, I've seen people only ping their own servers. I've seen people ping two different servers in two different countries. For some reason, they might be a traffic block. I'll leave that up to you. But when you've deployed an IoT gateway and you wanna make sure that you can always access that gateway or at the very least try and recover from some network event, this is a damn good place to start. Until next time, just.